Good evening and welcome to the Ionian Village 2015 webinar for our Summer of Ionian Village, Summer 2015. We are very, very excited to be with you tonight. My name is Father Evagoras Constantinides. I'm the director of Ionian Village and with me tonight uh, on our panel are a few of the people that have worked for Ionian Village and a few of the people who have been helping us put together the program for the few past few months uh, and work for us year round here in New York. So I wanna introduce them, I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves, say a few things about them, tell us a little bit about themselves, and uh, then we will get started with all of the, your information and questions and uh, lots of fun stuff. So why don't we go ahead and start with Nico. Good evening, uh, my name is Nico Savas, I'm the Director of Programs for Ionian Village. Um, I've been with the team now since uh, Father Regora started for going on uh, four years now. Uh, my job throughout the year is to travel around and promote the camp, uh, run programs for the camp, and throughout the summer, um, I'm assisting Father Regora and the team um, each and every day, working on schedules and movements of the camp and trips and things like that. Um, I'll go into a little more detail. A little later in the webinar, but uh, it's kind of what I do each day. Great. Um, one of the Marinas. Hi, I'm Marina Floratos. I am the new administrative assistant in the office along with Marina Tripotis. I just started in January and have been corresponding with a lot of you um, regarding the upcoming summer, and I'm very excited to experience it for the first time. Sure. Hi, I'm Marina Tripotis. This will be my third summer at Ionian Village. Um, I am from Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, now I reside here in New York. And I'm very excited to be here for another great summer of Ivy. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so these are just a few of the people that put together Ionian Village for your campers. Uh, we have our summer staff, which is 36 young adults from all across the country. We have our admin team, we have our summer clergy, we have our doctors and nurses who come and serve us. And all together, we're a staff of about 50 people here to serve the needs and the concerns and, the, and any worries you may have and to make sure that your campers are safe throughout their entire 20-day session at Ionian Village. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see a little box called question and answer. And in there, you can type uh, and some questions that you have anytime during the webinar. I'm going to start going and talking a little bit about a few of the things that we wanted to go over tonight. If you I miss something, toss your question in there, and then we'll take breaks and we'll do a question and answer uh, throughout the session. So basically, we're really excited about our summer this year. We have two full sessions of campers at Ionian Village this summer, which means 208 campers, bigger than we've ever had before, 208 campers in each session, coming from every metropolis all over the United States of America to be with us at Ionian Village. So this is truly a historic summer. In addition, this is the 45th anniversary of Ionian Village. 45 years ago in 1970, the first group of Ionian Village campers arrived, and actually this year, we will have a camper of one of the first campers who was there in 1970 will be with us this summer uh, in 2015 in Bartholomew. So what we wanted to do tonight is answer some of those questions that you may have. I know a lot of you have been calling the office or have been uh, wondering about you know, flights or um, what they do at camp or how do we contact our kids or any of those things. So we're going to run through a little bit of the information. Like I said, if at any time you have a question, pop it up on the side and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Now, what I wanted to talk to you a little bit of first is about our registration system and some of the forms that we're gonna need from you to be filled out. I think Marina Chipotis is gonna talk about that. Yep. Go ahead, Marina. Okay, so as all of you should have seen by now, we have three forms rolled out. Um, the physician's examination form that includes the upload of your immunization form. Um, the insurance card upload, as well as the health history. Um, those are due by May 15th, but if you'd like to get a head start on those, that would be really great. Um, we are going to roll out three new forms by mid of this week. Um, those will be uh, the visitor Sunday form, um, the travel day form, which is for departure and arrival information, as well as a parent guardian release form that's going to need to be notarized and then mailed back to our office. Excellent. So, so just be on the lookout for those, and we'll send an email when those are going to go out. 
Now, as you should know, all of the forms this year, everything that we're doing is basically is online. So even if there are forms or insurance cards or whatever you need to upload, you can take those, scan those, you can take a picture of them with your phone. It's really easy in our Camp Minder system to be able to upload the forms or the information that we need to the internet. The reason that we do this is because we're trying to stay environmentally conscious and have as little paper as possible, but also so that we can have all of the information about your camper in one place and it's easily accessible by our office in New York, by our office in Greece, by our nurses, and by anybody else who might need to access that information, which is a very limited number of people. So these forms are coming out and we ask that when the forms do come out, whether the health forms, the health history, the immunization forms, the uh, parent guardian forms, and especially the visitor form, that you get that information back to us by May 15th. Everything is due on May 15th. It's very, very difficult after May 15th when, oh, well, ya papu down in the hood, yo, I wanna come and visit, and it's like the day before. Uh, please don't put me in the position to have to tell you, yeah, about who that they can't come and visit their child because they're not on the sheet and we don't have that information. So even if you think there's a slight chance that yeah, yeah, Papu might come and visit or any of the other relatives that you have in Greece, put them on the visitor form, fill out your domestic travel form, fill out your health history and everything else that we need online so that we can get those things and have them here in the office and have everything set before we take off. Now, what we want to talk a little bit about next is some of the questions you may have had regarding flights or uh, regarding how uh, we're been, we've been working with a new company this year. For those of you who have come to Ivy in the past, this is different. This year, we're working with Pro Travel, who is our travel agency, and they've been handling all of our flights. So I'm going to ask the other Marina. I promise this wasn't done on purpose. Like, we didn't hire two people named Marina on purpose. But I'm going to ask Marina Floratos to talk to you a little bit about Pro Travel. Uh, so like Father said, Pro Travel is the new travel agency that we are working with this year. And I'm sure most of you have at this point had correspondence with Gosta, who um, has been really great in organizing all of the international flights and some of your domestic flights as well. Um, just to touch on the flights that we are taking to Athens, there are three different flights, a Swiss flight, a Delta flight, and an Alitalia flight. Um, and they are all leaving um, at night on the first day of the program and arriving the next day in Athens, um, all within a few hours of each other. And something really important that we want to talk about was the way that the chaperones work for the flights over there. So they are going to meet the campers at the ticket counter of their assigned airline. Um, that's where they'll meet them and kind of join the Ionian Village group. And the chaperones travel with them through security onto the flights um, and up until we get to Athens and get on the bus uh, with the rest of the IV staff that is already in Greece. Um, and for anything travel related, pro travel is definitely the best point of contact. Um, and we are also here as well. Excellent. So a few things to just add on to what Marina said. Uh, really important is, one, to make sure that you contact Pro Travel. You can get all of your information taken care of with Pro Travel through that way. Two is that once you get all of your information is that we have your domestic information in New York. We have all of your information, whatever you're doing domestically. Four hours before the flight leaves, four hours before your flight leaves, we need your campers in the airport in JFK. Now, you might say to me, well, Father, I travel all the time, and I know that it doesn't need to be at four hours, and I know that it can just be a few hours less, or that there's a reason that we do this, and this is because we take all the kids, we put them all together, they go through with chaperones. Now, somebody asked here, we're going to do this here, will the IV connecting flights be met by IV staff to help direct the kids to their connection? So like Marina said, we will have IV staff on the flights. It'll be some of the priests who are coming over and then also experienced staff members from the past who are going over to Greece for vacation or whatever it may be. We've asked them and enrolled them to uh, come and, be, and help us chaperone. So it's going to be about two to four people on each flight that are chaperoning these kids. And so what happens is they'll get off and when our entire group gets off wherever your connection is, You'll get off, you'll be met by a representative from the airline, and those campers and those staff members will be taken to their next gate through customs, to their next gate, where they will board the plane, and it's the same thing on the way back. So they will always be taken care of, they will always be chaperoned. The second part of that question was, do they need to get their bags prior to their connecting flights? They do not need to get their bags wherever their international connection is. 
So when they're with the group, they're gonna, we're gonna check their bags straight through from New York to Athens. If you're coming from California or Texas or Chicago or Atlanta or somewhere else, and you're flying into New York, then you need to get your bag, your camper needs to get their bag, go out of the secure area, meet us at the terminal in the ticket claim or in the, um, the ticket area, and then we will check everything through and all of the bags will be checked over uh, together. So that's a little bit about that. Marina, did I miss anything there? No, okay. So we have that done. Let's see, I have another one that just popped up. My son is coming from Cyprus. Should he meet the kids at the airport or at the camp? Uh, I would have him meet at the airport. You can call the office and get exactly what time because it's different for each session. But it's around 11.30 or 12.30 uh, in the morning that you would meet us at the airport. It's really easy to meet. Just We meet right in the, uh, the downstairs terminal there at the arrivals. So we got that. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to move on here to flight day. I want Marina Tripoda. She's going to talk to us a little bit about flights and that first day and how that works and what you should expect and what your campers should expect when they get to the airport. Okay. Um, so for flight day, communication is really key, uh, especially on our end. So if you're ever experiencing any delays or even if you're driving and there's delays or there's flight cancellations, please let us know. Uh, we will have the IV cell phone with us throughout the entire day. Um, each camper will, like Father said, show up four hours prior to their international flight time to their designated international terminal, and they will see myself as well as Costa from Pro Travel. Um, I will be with IV staff and chaperones, and he'll be with the Pro Travel team, and we will check each camper in. From there, Costa will help everybody check their luggage, get their ticket. Um, we give everybody a little international packet that will have an emergency contact phone numbers, um, and we will also be sending out some other information beforehand that the kids will carry with them, and we'll get them checked in with us, and then they go through security all together with chaperones. So like Father said, they're very well attended, um, and they're never left by themselves, and if you guys need anything leading up to the, the day, feel free to give our office a call. Okay, so there's been a few questions here uh, in the question and answer. I'm gonna, about travel. So we're just gonna go down, kind of bang, bang, get through these questions about travel, and then we'll move on to uh, our next session, uh, our next area that we wanna talk about. So here we have, um, okay. Why are the campers arriving a date after the program starts? So the program starts, on the 22nd of June, the first session starts on the 22nd of June, flying to Greece adds a day, it's an overnight flight. So you leave on the 22nd, you arrive in Greece on the 23rd. Same thing for second session, we leave on the 19th, the program starts on the 19th in New York, and then we arrive in Greece on the 20th. So that's why there's an extra day uh, as there. Stacy says, we still have not received any flight information, when do you expect us to receive that? Uh, they're working through at Pro Travel the over 500 people we have with staff, with Spiritual Odyssey, and with all of our campers, uh, and they've been doing a great job. We received word tonight that they have about 90% of people that they have contacted. So if you're one of the few that they have not contacted, I would expect to have everyone uh, have their flight information by the end of this week. Absolutely no problem. If for some reason you haven't heard by, from them by the end of this week, Give us a call in the office and we will uh, touch base with Costa and make sure that we get you the information that you need. Um, somebody asked, are all of the flights stopovers? Yes, all of the flights are connecting flights, are European connecting flights. There are no longer uh, direct flights that we offer to, uh, to Greece. All right, you know, Jean, Jean, Jeannie says, my son will already be in Athens and will meet the IV group at the airport when they arrive from New York, what are instructions for him to meet the group? Uh, Jeannie, what, you're gonna call the office and, and get more information, but basically your son will meet us at the airport at around 11.30 in the morning, and he will go downstairs into where they come out. Uh, it's not the baggage collection, because the baggage is inside, but there's an upstairs and there's a downstairs at the Athens airport. So he's gonna go downstairs and find a little cafe called Kimbo. It's at the left side of the airport and the, he'll see 25 IV staff members there with Navy polos with the bright blue IV logo on them. And he'll come up to one of us and say, hi, I'm Jeannie's son and I'm here to meet the group live in Athens. 
and then we'll take him in, we'll process him, get him his card, and then he'll shortly thereafter get on the bus with all of the rest of the campers. Um, George, my camper arrives at JFK early in the morning Monday, like 6.30. Will there any, be anyone from IV to hang out with them during the day at JFK until the flight departs? Unfortunately, George, with 6.30 is a little early for us, so our staff usually shows up around 10 o'clock in the morning, depending on what time the flight leaves, but around 10 o'clock, uh, that's when our staff usually shows up because they have to come into the office uh, beforehand to answer any phone calls or emails or any last minute emergencies that had taken place or any last minute parents that have concerns. So uh, we usually come into the office and then we'll head to the airport. So tell your camper just to go to the terminal, grab some breakfast if they'd like, and then look for the IV people around 10 a.m. Um, uh, somebody asked, will somebody be able to direct the campers through customs to get their, their domestic flights back home? So when your camper arrives in New York on their way back, they will arrive in New York, they'll come with the group out through customs together, and that's where a staff member from the IV office, either Marina or somebody else, will be waiting for them. What we can do is we make sure that all of the flights are on time. Our pro travel representative will be there as well. Uh, all we can basically do is, is point them in the direction of the terminal, but with so many people coming off on that day, we just don't have enough staffing to get everyone where they need to go. If you have concerns about that, the best thing to do would be to talk to the airline and you can have an unaccompanied minor uh, set up where the airline can um, chaperone your child from one plane to the next. But we don't unfortunately have the resources or the manpower to, to do that for everyone. But we uh, can definitely point them in the right direction that they need to go. Um, any advice for an individual traveling alone whose domestic flight only comes into LaGuardia and has to transfer to JFK? Marina, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Tripotis? Sure. Um, if you do have a flight that is transferring into LaGuardia, the first thing is to make sure that you have enough time to account for the travel from LaGuardia to JFK. Um, it being a weekday, it might be a little bit different, but you also always want to account for New York City traffic. Um, there are taxis as well as there is a shuttle designated to go in between airports so you can call the airport for that i believe it's a van that travels um or a taxi like i said we'll always do it i think it's about a flat fare of 50 to 70 dollars yeah there's definitely shuttles that run back and forth um you can call the office for more information or even costa from pro travel can give us a hand with that as well um who will print the boarding passes for the international those will be printed at the airport when your camper shows up. We don't print boarding passes ahead of time. There's really no reason to do it anymore. Uh, so when your camper shows up, they'll have their passport with them, and then they'll go up, and they'll get their boarding pass when they check their luggage. They'll get their boarding pass right there. Uh, so we don't pre-print boarding passes uh, anymore. What if the new boarding pass that we ordered has not arrived yet? Marina? Propose. What was that? What if the new boarding pass that or the new passport we have ordered has not arrived? Uh, normally, passports do take about four to six weeks to come in. So as long as you have it within about a month out of camp, you're fine. I would hope that they've already put in the application for it, and then just let Costa at Pro Travel know the new passport number because they do change from the old one, and he'll make sure everything's matched up. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, a little bit more about travel here. Um, father, my family will be traveling to Greece and uh, we'll pick up our daughter at the end of IV. Where will we pick her up and what time? Uh, you can call the office for more information, but it's in the form that we're going to send out, the, um, the parent guardian form. It'll have options. Basically, you can either pick them up from the Intercontinental Hotel in Athens, which is the hotel that we use, or you can pick them up from the airport. Those are the two locations. Uh, so we have times and everything all set out in the parent guardian form, but uh, for more information, I would call the office about that. Uh, okay, let's see. There's, I'm sorry, the questions are like really coming in quite quickly here. So I wanna, I'm gonna answer two more questions and then we're gonna pause and move on to other things and then we'll come back to all the other questions at the end. Um, okay, a very good question. What happens if a flight to Athens is canceled as happened three years ago? If a flight to Athens is canceled, uh, like has happened uh, before in 2012, 
we will take care of it just as we did in 2012. Uh, it was a little um, something obviously we weren't expecting, but working with Pro Travel, Pro Travel is not just a travel agency. They're one of the second, they're one of the largest travel agencies in the entire world. Uh, they have affiliates, they work with the airlines every single day. Uh, they have thousands of employees and customer service reps. Costa is on our account specifically, uh, but if something does happen where a flight is canceled, uh, Pro Travel will swing into action and we will make sure, just as we did three years ago, that all of our campers get chaperoned and to Greece without any problem, without any delay, without any incident, and everyone will arrive safely just as they did three summers ago. All right, so we're gonna pause with the questions there. You can keep writing questions if you have them, but we're gonna move on to um, a one quick definition I'm gonna ask Marina, and then we're gonna move on to what things happen at camp. So Marina, do you wanna talk a little bit about the differentiation between camp only and, uh, and, and uh, in the program? Your vote is, sorry. <laughs> um, so our all-inclusive option covers airfare to and from JFK to Greece and back. Um, we don't have a one-way option developed. So if you are traveling to Greece with Ionian Village and you want to meet your family or stay after or see some relatives or friends, this is your option. Um, our camp-only option covers those who will be in Greece prior to the beginning of the program as well as after. So if someone will be abroad prior to camp and wants to stay after, camp only is the option for you. Um, let us know if you'd like to switch an option or if your family vacation plans have changed and we can definitely switch the financial option, no problem. Um, we just would like to know ahead of time as far in advance as possible so we can plan ahead and make sure that we have accounted for everybody who's gonna be traveling with us over to and from Greece. Excellent, thank you. So this is a very, I know there's a lot to go on with travel and there's a lot of questions and that's totally great. I'm really excited that everyone is so excited about traveling, about getting your campers to Greece. I want to move on a little bit to a little bit about what we do at the program and a little bit about camp itself so that we can help understand that. Once we finish with that, we'll tack back and we'll go through all of the questions that are rolling in right now. So once your camper arrives in Greece, they'll, be, they'll come with the group or they'll meet at the airport or whatever it is, everyone will get to Ionian Village on that first day. And once we arrive at Ionian Village, the program in earnest starts. And that's when we, the, the kids are broken into cabins. That's when they get their assignments. That's when they move in. That's when they unpack. That's when everything starts. The music's pumping, the sun's shining, and it's a bright and wonderful day at Ionian Village. Now, one of the things that we do on the first night at Ioni in the Village is something called camper intake. And it's very important, the camper intake, that we collect a few things. So I'm going to ask Marina Floratos to talk to us a little bit about camper intake and what you need to know about camper intake for the first night. So camper intake, that happens on the first night. We collect a few of the things that the campers bring with them to Greece, including their cell phones, any foods they might have brought, um, any medications that they're going to be taking over the summer, as well as money to be exchanged. Um, I'm going to talk about medications first. So that night, every camper that comes in is going to talk to a member of our medical staff who are going to discuss and kind of verify all of the medications that they talked about on their um, health history form compared to what they've brought. So they'll go over things like dosages, when to take them, what they're for, um, if they have to take them every day. Uh, and we also ask that for those prescriptions, they're kept in the original bottles. So the bottles with the labels um, from the doctor or the pharmacy, wherever you've gotten it from, so that it makes it easier for our medical staff to go through. Another thing to note is that over-the-counter medicines are not necessary for your campers to bring. We do have them at camp um, and for our medical staff to give out uh, as needed, things like Tylenol or Tums, Advil, that sort of thing. Um, another thing is allergies. On camper intake, they will go through um, with a member of the staff any allergies that they've also indicated on their health history form, um, including what to do in a situation if they were to have an allergic reaction. We do let them know that all campers can keep an EpiPen with them uh, at all times and members, all the members of the medical staff as well as a few staff members on travel days have EpiPens with them as well. 
the way that allergies essentially work and um, dealing with them in terms of dietary restrictions is that every day at mealtime, somebody will be working with the kitchen to accommodate any specific needs that they have. So they will work with the kitchen ahead of time and let them know of any dietary restrictions that they have so that we have anything that the campers might need that day. The same goes for when we travel. So we call the restaurant ahead of time and let them know um, any specific accommodations that we need so that every camper can have something that they can in fact eat when we go um, out and travel. Um, and for the money exchange, there are two opportunities to exchange money over the summer. One is on that first night, and then another is before we go to Athens at the, towards the end of camp. Um, and I know a question that we get a lot of times is how much money to bring with them, um, how much spending money, and usually we recommend around 150 to 200 American dollars to bring. I think that should be everything. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so a few. So I'm gonna pop back to uh, Camp Bowling because there was one question there, and then a few questions about med stuff. Uh, someone said here. My daughter is staying after to visit with family. Should I have registered her as camper only? No. Your daughter in that case is in the program. Camp only is only for people who are in Europe before the program and are staying in Europe after the program. That means they're just coming to the camp portion. Anything else, if they're coming over with the kids and extending, or if they're coming over early but going back with the kids, anything else, they're in the full program. Now you say, oh, well, I found a cheaper ticket or this and that. That's not really an option here, okay? Well, you have to either do the in-program or the camp only, and the camp only, again, is only for those people who are in Europe or in the Middle East or wherever. They're coming, they're already with you, yeah, in Greece, and they're coming to the camp, and then they're going back to you, yeah. It's that type of a situation. So that's what camper only means. So no, you don't have to move them. You're absolutely right. Um, okay, uh, a few questions about... Here we go, medications that Marina just answered. Um, can campers be, Elizabeth McMillan, can campers be responsible for their own, their own medication? Unfortunately, no, they cannot be. Uh, we ask all campers to turn in all medications. It's the safest thing, it's the most responsible thing, and whatever medications they need, they can then go and get, they'll go and take them every day and come back, but no, all campers have to turn in their medications. Uh, uh, let's see here. My child is over 18, so legally an adult. Does she still have to turn in prescriptions for allergy medication she's been taking on her own since she was 12? Yes, she does. She's coming to summer camp, so yes, she does still have to turn in any and all medications, including over-the-counter medications, any medications, anything, Advil, Tylenol, Tums, anything. The only thing that they're allowed to keep with them is an EpiPen because an EpiPen is an emergency medication. Anything else needs to be turned in to our, uh, to our nurse and to our infirmary. You are allowed to bring over-the-counter medicine. Somebody asked, are you allowed to bring over-the-counter meds? Yes, you're allowed to bring over-the-counter meds, and you have to turn them in. So everything, everything, everything has to be turned in. All right, lots of questions, just lots of questions rolling in here. Uh, certain asthma meds do not come with the original container, which would have a patient label. Should we use a Ziploc bag? As close, obviously, um, you would want to have something with the original label or some sort of a prescription. A Ziploc bag in that case would be okay, but it's difficult for our nurses then to then know what it is that they're giving the camper. So that's why we ask for the original patient label. Uh, wow, there are so many questions. We hand, yes, Eleni, do we handle Dramamine? Yes, we handle Dramamine. We have, uh, we go on ferries, so obviously we have Dramamine, we have Emergency, we have Tums, we have uh, Calamine Lotion. I mean, we have anything that you would need. Our infirmary is fully stocked, uh, and we are able to get whatever we need at camp as well. Okay, so we are going to go into it now, what happens after intake on the first night, and we're going to cover a little bit about what camp looks like and what the program looks like. Uh, so I'm going to ask Nico Savas, our program director, who has been working with me for the past three years at Ironman Village and knows the program inside and out, to talk a little bit about a day at camp. Uh, so the day at camp begins, uh, we'll wake up around 7.15, a rise and shine. The staff members will wake up and very... Uh, uh, a very simple way, wake all the campers up and they'll get ready for about 45 minutes. Around eight o'clock, everyone will meet in the center of camp, which is our chapel, and we will uh, usually do an ortho depending 
um, if it's an at camp day or if a few people are traveling. After Othros, all together, we'll go over into what we call the trap and we will have breakfast together. Um, we'll have fruits out there and yogurts and cereal and things that uh, our wonderful cook, Kiria Sophia, will make for us. Uh, after about an hour of chapel and breakfast, we'll go to our first rotation. In the first rotation, uh, we can go to five uh, different departments, which could be an Orthodox life session, uh, music and Greek culture. Um, cabin time, uh, athletics, and um, uh, yeah, it's, those are the sessions. And each session is about an hour long. In that session, for instance, will be things like Orthodox life. We'll spend some time um, with a priest in a conversation with their cabin in the pines, uh, which is right at the entryway of our camp. An athletic session could be either held at our soccer field um, with new grass on it or down by the basketball courts. And we will do activities like playing basketball or if we go to soccer, we'll do different types of activities which could vary from a capture the flag to an epic game of scream and run and things like that. Uh, if it's a music and Greek culture uh, session, the two things uh, that we try to emphasize, obviously, is uh, music and Greek culture. So when they first come in, they'll do things where it'll be like some icebreakers and warm up to the idea of um, what the program is going to be for the day. And then they'll do things like uh, Greek dancing. They'll also do a few different uh, other activities uh, where it could be holding a position like an F zone. They'll be learning more about the F zones, the Greek armies, what the history and the rich culture that we have in Greece is. Um, and then they'll also do things like cabin, cabin time, which in cabin time, they'll make things like cabin banners for the evening activities and preparation of things like that. After uh, both sessions, they'll go to uh, free swim, which is either going to be at our private beach or it's going to be at our newly renovated pool where there'll be music playing. They'll be able to hang out and go swimming like that. And it's well monitored by eight uh, lifeguards that we have on staff this summer, which are also part of our staff. Um, after that, we'll head over to lunch, where we'll be all together again. And from lunch, we'll take about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour uh, rest, which we call siesta. So everyone can kind of re-energize, get out of the sun for a little bit, um, kind of settle back down. And then we'll wake them right back up with something we call flexivities. Flexivities is an activity that is used as kind of a uh, organized free time, you could say. We do crazy activities that the staff comes up with. It could be anything from Mario Kart to whose line is it anyways type activities, picture, picture scavenger hunts, uh, water polo, improv tour guides, the craziest things that we can come up with for about an hour. We just have fun in small little groups, which is a little more organized of a free time. We'll do a snack for about a half hour afterwards, and then we'll go into another session. After the final session of the day, we will have a well-monitored free time where they're able to kind of hang out with each other, talk to other people outside of their cabins, or you know, they'll have an opportunity to buy souvenirs and things like T-shirts and sunglasses and towels and stuff from our at-camp store, which we call the Parit. Um, they can also buy some snacks and juices and things like that. They can play backgammon uh, in the trap. They can play basketball. They can hang out in the amphitheater. They can kind of be in um, a certain area around the camp. Uh, after that, they'll head back to their cabins and prep for the evening. Every night, we end the night with an evening activity. So each evening activity is comprised of a different uh, thing. It could be anything from junkyard wars, where we take different pieces of junk um, through a whole, by basically about an hour of like a shopping type game with different mini games that lead to uh, racing each other with carts made out of junk. Um, we do things like Greek invasion. We'll have a white party. We'll do Olympics. We'll do a panigiri, uh, a beach party. We'll do a couple night with gods, things like that. And so in this prep for evening, they kind of get ready for this and they dress up with their staff members. And so they can really just dive right into the evening activity. Afterwards, we'll go to do chapel and dinner. And then right after dinner is when the evening activity starts. Um, and that'll last for about a couple hours. And uh, then we do a prep for bed and devotionals. Each night we like to end the day with devotionals, which is 
about a 15 to 20 minute um, devotional to God. Each camper will go around uh, while we're in the cabins with the staff members, and there'll basically be some type of theme of the day. It could be, um, it, it could be things like, you know, what was the highest point of your day? It could be another thing was, um, what did you really learn today? Or what made you feel close to God today? Or things like that, just to kind of wind down the night and reflect on the whole day um, as a whole. And that's basically the shortened version of what a whole day at Ionian Village looks like. Excellent. Thank you, Nico. Um, so basically what I want to go over now is I'm going to run through a few of the special things that are kind of unique to Ionian Village and some of the questions. Uh, so I'm going to try and answer a few things here and then pretty much we'll talk about a few things here, a little bit of medical, and then uh, we have a bunch of open questions that we will get to right after that. So hopefully I answer your question here. Um, first things first, Marina talked a little bit about money for money exchange. Ionian Village only accepts cash. We don't take credit cards. We don't do traveler's checks. We don't do anything like that. Uh, we accept American U.S. dollars, and we can change those for Greek euros. Uh, so if you send your campers over with traveler's checks, we can't trade those. Uh, if you send them over with just a credit card, we're in the village, so there's no ATM close uh, or anywhere local. Uh, usually, we recommend for your camper to bring anywhere about Seriously, 150 to $200, and that's like with souvenirs and everything. The only thing that they're going to be buying is maybe some bottles of water, some ice cream, some snacks at rest stops when we go on trips, uh, any icons or souvenirs that they would want from the monasteries, and then, of course, any gifts or things that they're looking for in Athens. If you think they're going to be on a big shopping spree in Zara or Pullen Bear or any of the places in Monastiraki, and you think they need more money than that, then feel free to send more money. Feel free to send less money. The stores in Athens do accept credit cards if you would like, uh, but you do get charged a pretty hefty uh, change fee from being charged in Greece and then over to America. And it's the same thing with the ATM. You get hit really hard with uh, the fee, the ATM fee as well. So that's why we recommend only cash for them to bring. Uh, traveler's checks as well. A lot of the places in Greece, a lot of the little stores and stuff are a little bit hesitant now um, to even take traveler's checks. So really cash is the best way. We will collect the cash and we can give the campers back the cash in euros. They write down, I gave $200, they initial it, and then we give them their money back with the exchange rate. Uh, and since we do such a large, a big bulk uh, of exchange, we get a much better rate than if you're only going over with like $100, $200 with a traveler check. We're exchanging like thousands of dollars, so we get a much better rate. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Visitor Sunday. Every Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30, we have Visitor Sunday. That is the only time the visitors are allowed at Ionian Village. I know that Theo and Theo want to come and visit and they want to see what the camp looks like and things like that, but this is a camp, this is a program, and so we're trying to run a program, and for that reason, we've allocated for the two Sundays we're at camp each session from 1.30 to 3.30. Your relatives can come into the camp. There's a small area where we have tables and chairs set up. We will pull your camper from the program so that they can come and sit and visit. Sometimes relatives bring food. They want to, you know, snack on something. They want to give this or they want to give that. Uh, a few things that's not allowed. The, we only allow relatives to go on tours of camps with staff members. You, you can't just like kind of go and roam through the camp. There's uh, youth protection policies that uh, advise against that. And then the second thing is you can't take, they can't take a camper and leave the campground. So it's not like, oh, well, we want to just take Yanni and go down the street and get a bite to eat. I'm sorry, that's not allowed. Uh, so if they want to come and visit, they have to come and be at the campgrounds and then visit at the campgrounds and then take off and leave. Also, please note that visitor time is only while we are at the camp. There's no visitor time in Athens. Uh, it's a very difficult situation because when we're in Athens, we're moving at such a quick pace. It's the last days of the program. And I know that you think it's great that your campers get to see Theo Rula, but you know, unfortunately, many times the campers don't really want to on the last night be pulled from the dance and go sit out in the lobby with the Arula. So unfortunately, we don't allow any visitor time in Athens. Please do not send your very cute Greek elderly Thea to the hotel and make me tell her that she can't see her nephew because I will. I've had to do it in the past. It's not fun for me, but we do not allow any visitor time while we are in Athens. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our technology policy. 
as uh, we've stated in all our materials, as we've stated online, we collect all cell phones, iPads, can anything with Wi-Fi capability, we collect it at the camp. You bring a computer, we collect your computer. You bring a cell phone, we collect your cell phone. You bring a Kindle that has Wi-Fi capability, we collect the, anything that has Wi-Fi capability, we collect. You bring an iPod Touch that has Wi-Fi capability, we're going to collect that, okay? This is a camp. The purpose of the camp is not to be connected to the outside world, but to be connected to God. And that is our first and foremost priority. And these are the policies that we've established after years and years and years of trying to figure out how we can work together with technology. And the way to work together with technology is to give our campers a safe place to disconnect, where they're being watched, they're being taken care of, they're being cared for, they're being loved. They're not in harm's way. They're not going to get in trouble. They're not going to be in, you know, in danger. And so we can take that technology from them. We can allow them an opportunity to grow. We can allow them an opportunity to uh, live, but not with technology. Some people are asking, I can see right now, can campers bring uh, cameras? Yes, they can bring cameras uh, to camp, of course. There's plugs in each wall. They can use it to charge their cameras, but if they come with the iPhone and their their cell phone and they say, oh, well, this is, you know, I'll take my SIM card out and I'm going to still use my phone, we'll just, we, we don't allow it. It's not allowed. So if they want a camera, they need to have a separate only camera, um, you know, kind of like how all of us grew up. So it's not the end of it. It's fine. Um, a little bit about communication with home. I know a lot of people have asked about, well, how do we communicate with our campers? How do our, communi our campers communicate with us? Camp is a very special, unique opportunity for our campers to disconnect from what's going on and to focus in on their lives, on what's going on with their life, and what's going on with their relationship with God. Make no mistake about this. Ionian Village is a summer camp. It is in Greece, and it is focused around our spiritual need to grow close to Jesus Christ. That is our fir first and foremost objective. This is a religious camp. So if you're sending your campers and you're telling them, oh, it's not a religious camp, oh, it, we do chapel every morning, we do chapel every night, and we talk about God pretty much all the times in between. So this is a religious camp, and you should know that. And part of being able to connect with God is to be able to close off that technology and to be able to venture out and have a little bit of independence. So there are, well, there's one way for your camper to communicate with you, two ways actually, and there's one way for you to communicate with your camper. The way for you to communicate with your camper is writing letters or sending packages. Campers love getting packages and love getting mail at camp. Think back to when we were growing up and we actually got hard mail and we knew what it was and we would get excited about it. That's the same excitement that we want to have at Ionian Village. So please, Send your campers mail, send your campers package. Remember, it takes about a week to get there. So send it even a little bit early so maybe they have something when they get there. All right, but you can send them letters, you can send them uh, packages through snail mail, so-called. Emails are not delivered to campers. Uh, phone calls, unless it's an absolute emergency, somebody's sick, somebody's in the hospital, somebody has died. Uh, phone calls will, won't connect you with your camper. They have to be in the program. What we can do is if you would like, we can give you an update on your camper. But unless it's an absolute emergency and you call over, we won't connect you with your camper. That's just the policy of the camp. Uh, as far as your camper connecting you, they have two choices. And now this is really important and you need to pay attention. The first choice is for your camper to write you. Now, let's say your camper doesn't really, isn't a big fan of the handwriting and the postcards or the letters. Your camper can call you. We have a block in the afternoon. It's that free time that Nico talked a little bit about earlier. It's an hour in the afternoon. We have four pay phones where the campers can buy little cards and they can call home. Now, what this means is that sometimes there are campers who want to call home, so there's usually a line. And that means that campers have to miss out whatever activities it is to stand in line and call home. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been doing this for a while, and campers aren't usually calling mom and dad. They're calling their boyfriends or their girlfriends or their friends or all these other people. So if you want to hear from your camper, please don't send me a really nasty email in the middle of the summer and say, well, I haven't heard from my camper. Because all I'm going to do is go tell your camper, hey, you need to call mom and dad. But they have to then make that choice to call you. We don't force them to call home. We want you to know 
They're safe. I got it. I promise you. Unless you hear anything from me, know that they are safe and they are being taken care of. If they choose to call you, that's a choice that we allow our campers to make for themselves. We do not force them to call home. Uh, now, uh, a little something about uh, emergencies. And I want to, there is a few people who have been asking questions. We've got like 80 questions open right now, so we're going to try and get to those in a minute. Uh, but something about emergencies. We are uh, equipped with emergency system emergency training at Ionian Village. Our staff knows what to do in case there's an emergency, if there's an earthquake, if there's, you know, whatever emergency may arise, our staff is trained for that situation to make sure that the kid's safety is first and foremost. So if there's an emergency at camp, we're covered with that. If you have an emergency at home, and you need to get a hold of us, there will be a phone number for the camp on our website, and also my email address is there. And if you need, you have an absolute emergency, email me personally, and I will get to you as absolutely soon as I possible as I can. Uh, so that's in case there, and again, these emergencies are, somebody is sick in the hospital, somebody has died, it is not, um, Fluffy's going into the kennel for four days over June or July 4th weekend, uh, it is not, I just haven't talked to my son in three days and I really need to talk to him. I, that's not an emergency for us. That's your campers having an awesome time at camp. Um, and I know that sometimes that's hard. I know that sometimes that's, that's difficult for parents. And that's okay. Uh, because part of the growing and the independence and the awesomeness of camp is not only growth for the campers, but it's also growth for our parents. And maybe for the first time for some of us, venturing out into that independence with our campers. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit, lastly, about uh, medical, and then once we talk about medical, we'll pop into a bunch of these questions. So, uh, Marina, did you, were you going to talk about medical, or am I going to talk about medical? Um, I talked a little bit about how medications work at camp, and when um, they get there on intake night, how they kind of go about that, and then I didn't talk about specifically how they get um, given out or anything like that, though. Okay. So basically, meds are given out every day, every morning, and every night. If your camper has a special situation where they need a middle-of-the-day med, we can absolutely get that accommodated as well. So meds are a very routine thing. It's just like at any other camp that campers go to. They'll go, they'll get their meds, take their meds in the morning, take their meds at night. Um, while they're at camp, if they get sick, our infirmary is stocked by two doctors and a nurse that are there with us at all times. They come on the trips with us. Uh, if a camper gets sick, we take care of them. If there's an emergency, they twist their ankle, uh, you know, they break a toe or a finger, we have medical facilities in the area where we know the doctors, we know the physicians, we know the technicians, and we can get anything that we need at any time of a day. Um, food allergies. Now, for many of you that have food allergies, there is the health history form. There's going to be an area that talks about food allergies, and you need to put accurate food allergies in that health history form. So if they're allergic to gluten, if they're allergic to shellfish, if they're allergic to tomatoes, if they're, whatever they're allergic to. This is not a, they do not like. They do not like is different from they are allergic to. So they are allergic to, there's going to be a violent reaction if they eat these things. Um, we do as much as we can to, for those kids who medically need to have a gluten-free diet, we can provide a, a gluten-free diet for medical need, not for a uh, health, you know, vanity reason's sake, uh, but we can do the best that we can for that. And uh, we have people who are on the lookout. Marina is one of them. My wife, Maria, is the other one who are helping our campers when we travel and when we're at camp, make sure that they have the appropriate food, that they have healthy food when they have allergies and that there's no sort of reaction or anything. So everyone eats what they should be eating. Um, and then, you know, of course, sometimes our campers do get sick while they're at camp. And like I said, we have a fully stocked uh, infirmary. And anything that we do not have, we can definitely get from Greece. We have two doctors each session. We have a nurse who's going to be with us the entire summer. We are more than capable to handle uh, any campers who do feel ill, get sick. It's happened in the past. And usually we're really great about getting them healthy, giving them the health and the love that they need, and then getting them back into the cabin and back into the program. So what we're going to do with our last 10 minutes here is we're going to go through and I'm going to get through some of these questions here. Nico, Marina, Marina, anything else that I missed? 
Uh, Father, the only one uh, thing is that they are allowed to carry their inhalers as well. So it's their EpiPens and their inhalers are allowed to be on them at all times. Yes, thank you. So EpiPens and inhalers live in there. All right, so let's see. Let's get through some of these here. Okay, so what we're going to do, if you have a question, I would recommend for the next 10 minutes, maybe pause all the questions and then just listen to what we have. And then if you have another question after we've covered, there's like 80 questions. If you have another question, then um, ask one of your questions. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we'll start here at the top. Uh, will I be able to call her or email her? What is the phone number or email? And will pictures be posted of our kids online so we can see them? So like we just talked about, um, there will there's no way to call your camper or email her, but they can call you if they would so choose. Pictures will be posted every day on our website at ionianvillage.org. Uh, usually we post about 150 to 200 pictures a day. Let me make a caveat there, okay? We post about 150 pictures to 250 pictures a, a day. We're going to have Alex Savis, who's our camp photographer and videographer with us this year. If your camper is not in a photograph, that does not mean that they are dead. It just means they didn't get in front of the camera that day, okay? So if you want me to see your camper in lots of pictures, make sure from now that you tell little Yanni or little Maria, hey, you need to get in front of the camera so mom and dad can see you because we wanna make sure that everything's awesome and that you're having a good time. Also, please remember, a picture is one second in time. That's it. So don't overread, oh, well, you know, they weren't smiling in this picture. Maybe they're not having a good time. And I promise you, if they're not having a good time, if they're homesick, if they hate their cabin, if any of those things happen, we will call you. We will get you involved if we need to. But other than that, trust the program and trust that we know what we're doing and how to make your camper happy and how to give them the best summer of their lives. Uh, Patty asks, being that you've increased the enrollment, are you staffed appropriately with having a staff of 50? Has this been taken into consideration? Thank you for your question, Patty, and yes. We've uh, increased enrollment overall, but every year for the past three years, we've had at least one session of 200 campers. Our ratio is about seven to one, which is the appropriate ratio. Uh, it's even more than seven, to, it's less than seven to one, I'm sorry, it's more around six to one, which is the appropriate ratio for, uh, as designated by the American Camping Association. So we have those cabins, uh, those staff members in the cabin, and then we have admin staff and medical staff and clergy staff uh, as well. Uh, so Caroline asked a little bit, can we talk about dress code? Um, I'm going to ask Marina Floratos if you can ask, answer this question a little bit about female dress code. Marina was uh, one of our cabin staff last year, and she got to deal with uh, female dress code quite a lot. Sure. So in terms of summer appropriate clothing for girls, we ask that um, their shorts be fingertip length, which means when they put their arms down straight at their sides, that their shorts are no shorter than the ends of their fingertips. Um, and in terms of shirts, I know that on some of um, our older things we had on there that they couldn't wear tank tops, um, as long as the shirts essentially don't show any of their undergarment straps or anything like that, um, it's acceptable and it's fine. Um, I would say if you're questioning it or if your camper is questioning it, then they probably shouldn't be wearing it. Um, and then when we travel to monasteries and when we have liturgy on Sundays, um, whether it be at church or, or at camp or in Athens, um, we ask that their skirts be knee length, um, covering their knees and their shoulders for when we go into monasteries. Um, and then swimsuits have to be one pieces. I know that we've gotten some questions about whether or not they can be strapless. I'm pretty sure that the answer to that is that they can be strapless um, as long as they are modest. And then in terms of swimsuits, no, they have to be one piece completely covering the stomach no, with no cutouts or anything crazy like that. Um, I think that should cover it. Okay. So moms, moms, I'm going to give you the same tutorial that I give your campers at camp on the first night. This is so simple. Here's the thing. You're out, you're shopping, you're at the store, you're like, oh my God, that's so cute. Here's the rule. Okay, this is me, all right? I'm here, I'm at camp. This is very easily how we decide what is appropriate and what is not appropriate at Ionia Village. Have your camper get dressed in whatever it is that they're wearing and then have them put their arms straight out, okay? Straight out, arms are straight out. And then it's simple. You just naturally let your arms fall to your sides. Okay, sorry, naturally let your arms fall to your sides. 
the bottom of your fingertips, that's where the dresses or the skirts or the shorts need to come, to the bottom of these fingertips. If it's above it, an inch, two inches, three inches, your camper is going to have to change. It's very simple. It's the easiest way. And now, look, I've been doing this for, well, father, my daughter's got long legs, and well, father. This is it. This is the rule. And none of this like, oh, well, I do it like this, and it's, it's fine. It works. I know all the tricks. I know all the little games. I know all of those things. Hands down to the sides. That's it. Okay? That's how we determine what is and is not appropriate to wear at Ionian Village. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Nick from Colorado asks, what if anything happens if Greece is no longer part of the European Union when camp starts? I'll be perfectly honest with you, that's not something that we're expecting. Um, we are in constant communication with the Greek officials here in New York at the, at the General Consulate, as well as American officials in Greece at the, uh, at the embassy in Athens. That's not something that we're expecting. If it is a situation that does happen, uh, we would have to reevaluate the situation in Greece as well as the situation in America. Um, I don't. As I've said, I don't expect for that to happen, uh, and I can't provide an answer of what will happen until the time that it actually happens and everybody is able to really analyze what the fallout from that decision is. Uh, unfortunately, I think the reality is, is that no one knows what will happen if Greece defaults and leaves the EU, and since no one really knows what would happen, we don't know uh, what if any fallout there would be from that decision. So uh, at this time, that's not a decision we're expecting and that's not something that we think is gonna happen. Uh, so we are taking it one step at a time, one day at a time. Uh, someone asks here, when I say someone, it's because they wrote anonymously. So if there's a name, I'll, I'll give you a name shout out. If you wrote anonymously, I'll give you someone. Uh, someone asks, Will there be anyone to meet my child's flight in NYC to assist her to get to the IV staff outside of security? Yes, so there are chaperones on the flights from New York to Greece, and there are also chaperones on the flights from Greece to New York. So basically what's going to happen is that they're going to do checkoffs every time before when they get to Athens, once they go through passport, check off. Are all people here, all 70 or 60 people, however many on the flight, are they all here? Yes. Get on the plane. Is everyone here? Yes. Get in Zurich. Is everyone here? Yes. Arrive in New York. Get baggage. Is everyone here? Yes. Once everyone's accounted for, the chaperones will lead them out through customs, and then that's where our IV staff outside will uh, be together. Uh, okay. Elizabeth asks, so when a camper lands in New York, they need to go to baggage claim and then meet the Ionian Village group? Yes, that is correct. Also, when will we get contact phone numbers? You'll be given, we're actually gonna send out in the next few weeks a little package to each of you that'll have a, a letter from me and it'll have a sheet that has all of our contact information like uh, travel day, phone number, all of the social media identities, the phone number at camp, it'll have all of that information on there as well as your luggage tags as well. So yes, when your camper lands in New York, they need to get to the baggage claim, get their bag domestically, and then head outside of the security area to meet the Ionian Village group. Uh, okay. Someone says, we used a car service, Carmel, that helped us get kids from LGA to JFK three years ago, and it worked out just fine. They were very helpful on the phone. Thank you. That's a great uh, suggestion, Carmel. Um, also, there's uh, Dial 7, I think, is one, and they'll pick them up at the airport and take them to the other one. And I think Dial 7's phone number is 777 that's a good shout out for them right there. Okay, uh, Nick asks, will IV be taking the camper's passports and holding them during the trip? Yes, so your campers land in Greece and they get out, we literally walk out of the airport and they're handed a card with their name and their bus number that they're about to board. Before they board the bus, they have to hand their passport to the staff member that's outside of the bus. The staff member puts all the passports into the bags, I take all of the bags at the end of all of the trips, put them on the bus, we take them to camp, we inventory, make sure we have everyone's passports, and then we put them in our safe and they're kept and the campers do not get their passports until the last day of the program. When they're going that morning, they're going to check out, we hand them their passports, their cell phones, their medications, they get on the bus, they go to the airport, and that's the end of the program. So yes, we hold on to their passports throughout the entire uh, program. Someone here asks, sorry, 
Will campers from the same church be able to sit together on the plane? We don't do any of the plane seating or anything like that, so that's something that you would have to uh, ask Costa from Pro Travel. I'm willing to bet no. And look, let me expand a little bit on this. I know your campers are coming from the same church. I know they're nervous. I know they don't know anybody. I know that you think this is a great thing. Let them get on the plane. Usually the group is sitting all blocked together. If they don't sit right next to each other, it's that first day. The reason the program starts that first day is that they get to meet new people. And that plane ride over for many of our campers is like where they met some of their best friends that were friends for the entire summer. So uh, you can talk to Costa about getting seating next to somebody if you'd like. I know that we can't uh, guarantee it. Uh, Margaret asks, what time is pickup from the Intercontinental Hotel? Marina Chapotis, do you have that? Um, as of right now, it is going to be different for first and second session. It hasn't been set in stone yet, but uh, as the travel day form goes out later this week, we will have those times for sure. Um, it will be earlier in the morning, probably around 10 a.m. Okay, perfect. So um, that it will give you the time. It's in the morning, though. It's usually sometime in the morning. Like we said, it's depending on flights, and then we have to do our scheduling of what makes sense for the whole day for us as well. Uh, anonymous, hello, Father. I haven't received anything in my Camp Minder page yet. When will I see forms? Marina Floratos, do you have that? Sure. So what's probably happening there is that you're signing in with your camper account using your own personal email address. The way that Camp in Touch works is that you do have to use a parent's email address to log in. The system won't let you see it um, if you are a camper. So if you just give us a call at the office tomorrow and we can reset it and then your parents should have everything show up for them. Thank you. Okay, anonymous answers. Uh, asks, do you provide the campers with any safety training? We give the campers lots of training as far as how to board buses safely, how to get on and off of buses. We do cabin counts, how to get on and off of ferries. Uh, so we have many policies in place for traveling and for our place at our placement at camp to keep our campers safe. And the first day or two, it's kind of learning those policies and getting into, okay, well, why do I need to go to the bathroom with three people? Why do I need to have a staff member accompany me? Why do, you know, I'm 18, I'm this and that. Our policies are designed to keep our campers safe. And that's all we need to say. And that's all we need to know is that all of our policies are designed to keep our campers safe. So we have many policies like that uh, that we teach our campers in the first couple days of camp and then they snap right in and before you know it, uh, they're gonna be coming home and asking to go to the bathroom with groups of three and you're gonna think it's weird. Uh, Lisa asks, how many pieces of luggage allowed per child and max weight per luggage? They are allowed one piece of checked luggage up to 50 pounds and they are allowed one carry-on and one personal item. So that's one checked luggage, one carry-on, and one personal item such as a purse or a briefcase or a backpack, something like that. Uh, Caitlin, any fear of the Euro in Greece right now? Uh, I have no fear of the Euro in Greece right now. If what you're asking is um, if we're afraid of the, the currency, it's actually really great for us as Americans because it's the lowest currency, it's the lowest exchange rate that it's been in my three years. So uh, your campers are gonna get a lot more for their money than they have in the past. Uh, Nicholas Camper, John and Helen, are watching together thank you how much spending money do you recommend our campers bring with them also what type of medical coverage will there be provided at camp talked about this a little bit earlier about hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars uh, based on if you need more for souvenirs or clothes or you need to buy gifts for your entire family uh, really if you're just buying snacks and little icons and whatever you could probably do a hundred and hundred fifty dollars um, as far as medical coverage two doctors and a nurse at camp with us 24 hours a day on call, uh, and they are available at all times for our campers. And these are not just, you know, uh, like, um, these are excellent doctors. These are really excellent doctors. Okay, uh, Caroline, can I bring my own international credit card? You, Caroline, you're more than welcome to bring your own international credit card. Most places that we're gonna go don't accept them. Um, the monasteries don't accept credit cards. Most of the rest stops don't accept credit cards. Uh, a lot of places in Greece, basically until we get into Athens, don't accept credit cards. Um, so if you want to bring your credit card, perhaps for like your bigger purchase, if you're looking for jewelry or things like that, then that's great. If you're trying to charge a 50 cent water bottle at the rest stop, you're probably going to get some looks. So uh, I would bring some cash for that as well. 
Anonymous attendee asks, if my son has made a request to room with friends of his who are a grade older than him, will they be able to room together? As we say on our website, uh, we do try and honor all of the roommate requests that we can, but nothing is guaranteed. Um, when there's kids who are in different grades, basically what happens is that the older camper will come down a grade. Um, and so a 12th grader might be in a cabin with 12th and 11th graders, or a 10th grader might be down with 9th grader if they're asking to be with the 9th grader. Please understand that we use our discretion and what we think will be best for your camper, for the environment of the cabin, and for the environment of the camp when we're doing our cabin assignments. Uh, but with most success, we're able to pretty much put everyone where they'd like to be. Okay. Uh, is it advised, anonymous attendee, is it advised to exchange your American dollars prior to coming to camp? You're more than welcome to do that. Uh, the exchange rate, like I said, is great right now in Greece. Um, so if it's something that you feel more comfortable with, you're absolutely more than welcome to do that. Um, but I don't know if I would say that it's recommended. Uh, anonymous attendee, do you need to bring your prescription with your medication for camp? Uh, no, you don't. You need to have it in a bottle with the original labeling on it. Um, if you can just like bring a, like, I was about to say a film roll, like, you know, those old black film rolls, but you can't just bring, bring a bottle with like a bunch of pills in it. Um, we need to see, it needs to be a prescription with uh, the actual label on it. Or if it's a, uh, you know, a nose thing in a box, whatever it comes in, whatever your prescription comes in. Um, anonymous, how do debit or credit cards work in the villages? They do not. What about travel Lex type debit cards that we load with euros at home? Uh, I'm not quite sure what a travel Lex debit card is, but like I said, most of these small shops that we're going to be going to, the rest stops, things like that, they don't, they just don't take credit cards. Or if they do, you're going to get charged such an exorbitant amount, of a rate for, for uh, doing that, that it's just not worth it. It's much easier, much, much easier to just bring cash um, with you. And then, you know, you also, we do two money exchanges. Let me mention that. So if your camper brings like $500, they don't have to exchange $500 at once. What we can do is if you'd like, you can turn in all of that $500 to the office. We'll keep it in our safe. And then you say, okay, I only want to exchange $200. That's not a problem. We can keep your stuff safe. We have no problem doing that. We'll label it. We'll put it in there. It goes in the safe. The safe is in my office. Uh, so that's not a problem, but really travel debit cards, credit cards, Unless you're buying jewelry or something that's a, a large purchase for you know several hundred dollars, I really just I don't recommend it. Uh, okay, uh, anonymous. Can they use international phones? The international phones that they can use are the pay phones that are located at the camp. If they bring their own cell phone with an international SIM card or anything like that, we'll take that from them and we'll hold on to that for the duration of the program. Uh, anonymous asks, how do you assign the seats on the flight over? We don't assign the seats, we don't assign which flights they're on, we don't do any of that. That's all done with pro travel. So if you would like a seat uh, suggestion, you can try and call Costa, but please remember that he's working with over 500 people. Him and his assistant are working with over 500 people, uh, and I'm sure that they will try and help, but uh, again, we can't make any guarantees as far as seats are um, regarding. And, and sometimes we have concerns about seats. Let me say this. In the course of flying over to Greece, and the course of what your camper is about to experience, the flight over is going to be like a blip. Like, like what? They're going to remember everything else that happened. So I wouldn't get too concerned about, you know, all of the flight stuff on the way over. But again, you can talk to Costa and he can do um, whatever he can. No guarantees. Anonymous attendee. Come on, guys. Put some names. Let me see your names here. Uh, anonymous attendee. What clothing do they need and, what, and does the camp do laundry? Will you have a list of recommended clothes to bring? Will you make sure they wear sunscreen? Oh, okay. So here's, let me go one by one. Uh, what clothing do they need to bring? So we're going to send uh, in the next few weeks, you'll get everything you need, a camp, a packing list guide to how to pack for Ionian Village. And it talks about all the different clothes they'll need. Uh, if there's theme stuff that we want them to bring this year, what types of stuff for uh, monasteries, Marina and Nico talked about it a little bit earlier about the, those types of clothing. Uh, so that'll all be laid out in the what to bring Tyonian village. No, the camp does not do laundry. Your campers get to do their laundry and they get to do it village style in buckets with water and soap where they wash their laundry like this and then hang it on the line. This is straight up Greek village style and we love it. 
Uh, we have a list of recommended clothes to bring. Will we make sure that they wear sunscreen? Uh, you know, obviously all of your campers are in high school and uh, we want to make sure that they're responsible for themselves. And we do tell our staff members to make sure that our campers are wearing sunscreen. We're not gonna put it on them for them. We're not gonna apply, we're not gonna have like a thing where everyone walks out and they put on sunscreen before they walk out of the cabin. We'll remind them, but it's their responsibility to put on that sunscreen, okay? Uh, Cindy, yes, a name. My daughter is traveling from Los Angeles. Is there a flight from LA to New York so that she can take with other IV campers? There is no organized flight from LA to New York. Uh, if you know other people from the LA area, you can talk to them and see if you can kind of uh, put something together. But as of right now, there's nothing that we uh, organize domestically. How are cabins assigned? Cabins are assigned by, um, anonymous person is asking this, sorry. Uh, uh, cabins are assigned by age and by grade, uh, mostly by grade and then by age, because we wanna make sure that they are with kids who are going through the same social experiences uh, that they're going by, and then we do it here in the office in New York. Anonymous person asks, since session two falls during Lent, what type of foods do you offer for protein intake? So we have Kitty Sophia, who is an awesome, awesome camp chef, and I'm gonna ask Marina Floratos to talk a little bit about the protein options that we have outside of just meat and protein, because she is a vegetarian. <laughs> Um, so I know that um, during this is a concern that a lot of people have during um, the time that we fast um, but I can honestly tell you that Gideon Sofia makes incredible food that does not make you feel like you are fasting um, everything that she makes I know that she makes very good pasticho that Father Vigoris is a fan of and she'll also make it meatless um, and they'll also do things um, like fish and um, she gives us other seafood options as well um, that are I guess high in protein um, that you can be able to eat during Lent. A lot of veg vegetables, um, mixed vegetables, things like that. Um, it really, I know a lot of people go in with concerns about having to fast during it, but I feel like once we get there, it's not even a concern in people's minds because they don't even realize that we are fasting. Excellent, awesome. Uh, so hopefully that helped out. Uh, anonymous person, does my camper need to bring mosquito repellent? Personally, I never find mosquitoes to be that crazy, um, but it's always good to have mosquito repellent, especially if you're somebody who is really susceptible to being bitten by mosquitoes. Um, we don't have anybody, Nico, Marina, anybody, what are your thoughts? Jump in here. Nobody's jumping. But no, I don't think that's a problem. I mean, yeah, I don't think that mosquitoes are really a huge issue that we have at camp. Nico? No, I'm, I'm with Marina on this. I don't think it's an issue at all. Okay, so um, we have mosquito repellent at camp if it gets crazy, but it's always good to throw it in the bag if you'd like. Uh, should we bring soccer cleats? No, that is that answer. Uh, how do we send for various theme nights? Is the neon party, white party, USA, Greek night? Uh, we do have a few theme nights, and those will be outlined of things that you may need. Uh, in that sheet that we're going to send about what you need to pack for Ionian Village. So those will all be them. They're not quite spelled out yet because we're still working on finalizing our program. But everything that you will need will be in that email of what to bring, to, or that email, uh, sorry, that sheet about what to bring to Ionian Village. Uh, anonymous person asked, uh, can you review the dress code for girls, cover-ups, bathing suits, etc.? We talked a little bit about that earlier. This question was asked about a half hour ago. We talked about that a little earlier. Uh, you know, girls need to be have one-piece bathing suits. Short skirts, uh, dresses need to be come down to at least your fingertips where they hang, uh, and they do need to wear cover-ups at the meals. Guys need to have shirts on at any time except for when they're swimming, even if they're playing sports, things like that. Um, also with girls, I say one-piece bathing suits, but ladies, let's be honest, okay? These whole bathing suits where like the whole sides cut out or it dips in very low or it comes down to the back all the way to the butt. Like, moms, I don't know why you think that's cute. It's not, so please don't send them to camp. Okay, they have no place at camp. We're here to be modest as hottest, all right? That's what we say. So we want all of our campers to be dressed modestly. We want all of our kids. We're not there to, this isn't a fashion show in Miami, all right? This is a orthodox summer camp. So help me get on my team of not sending your camper to camp with a crazy bathing suit because if they come to camp with only crazy and appropriate bathing suits, then we have to go find them something in the village and. I promise you they're not very nice at all. They're like Yaya's bathing suit, and nobody likes Yaya's bathing suit. 
Okay, anonymous person, do they need to bring anything in particular for these activities? Example, the white party. Um, like I said, it'll be in the what you need to wear to, what you need to bring to Ionian Village uh, page that we put out. Ariadne says, if campers' cell phones are handed in on the first day, are they, are they able to check in with home periodically or are the phones kept until camp is over? So yes, the phones are kept until camp is over. And yes, they are able to check in periodically if they choose to call home. So they can buy one of the little three-euro cards. They can get there in line and they can check in periodically if they'd like to, if they choose to. Uh, but that is their choice, all right? Anonymous person says, what about cell phones? Will they ever be able to use them while at camp? No, they will never be able to use them while at camp. If not, is there a certain time to call? Yes, every day free time from five to six. And how does communication with our campers work? You are more than welcome and invited to send your campers letters so that they can get that. Check out our Summer Camp Central online. This is something that we started last year, which is great. It has the pictures from the day. It tells you what activity we're doing during the day, what activity we're doing at night. It has blog entries, it has social media, it has everything that you'll need to see what's going on with your campers and communicate in the way that you're there with them virtually, but not there with them physically and knowing that they're okay. Now, uh, Esther asks, where else do they visit? We visit several places. We visit Zakynthos, we visit Patra, we visit Kefalonia, we visit Kalavrita, we visit ancient Olympia, we visit uh, Athens. There's a whole list on our website at www.ionianvillage.org where you can see all the places that we visit with camp. Catherine Murphy asks, will campers be able to transfer their euros back to dollars before leaving Grace at a good exchange rate? Unfortunately, that is not something that we're able to offer uh, because we end our program in Athens. And so we're kind of going, 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 and then we end in Athens if it's an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, I would recommend that they not, if they don't think they're going to spend $500, not to change $500. Uh, and then that way, you know, they won't have a lot of money left over. Uh, anonymous attendee, can campers bring cameras and will they have a place to charge these cameras? Yes, every cabin has, yes, they can bring cameras and yes, they will have a place to charge them in the cabins. Every cabin has in each room, there's four rooms in each cabin. Every room has uh, sockets and plugs so that they can charge their cameras. Sophia, do the cabins have power adapters to charge a camera? Uh, bring your own power adapters because the plugs in Greece are the European ones, the two prong ones, and so that you can plug into those. So you need to bring a, uh, a, an adapter. Can campers bring a camera? Yes, you can bring a camera. Lots of camera questions, it's good. Uh, okay, anonymous person, how many kids travel on each flight? There's about 60 to 70, 75 kids on each flight with about three or four chaperones on each flight. Uh, and like I said, we're split over three flights this year. Each flight has chaperones. Each flight has the group. Each flight will be met by people from the airline. Uh, and we have a whole procedure laid out so that your camper's safety is first and foremost and taken care of. Sorry, I got to get a quick thing on Dimitri Ampanayotis asks, what time will campers be taken to the airport at the end of the session? Uh, they'll be taken to the airport in the morning, depending on what time their flights are. So there's three flights, and I believe two of them leave at 6 o'clock in the morning. So if they're on the 6 o'clock in the morning flight, they'll go to the airport at about 2, 2.30. We leave from the hotel, we get to the airport at 3.30, we get them checked in, and then they go to their flight. If they're in the later flight in the afternoon, then they'll get there in the morning. Uh, but it all depends on what flight that they're on. If you have more information or more questions or you'd like more information about this, feel free to call the office and we can um, give your specific situation. Elizabeth has a dress code question. How long do shorts need to be and can swimsuits be one piece athletic swimsuit? There are one piece athletics that have an open back or modest. I think that that's, uh, that's fine. There's no problem there. We talked a little bit about how long shorts need to be. Seriously, it's got to be down to... Um, to, to the fingertips. Here's a good solution. Like you're like, oh, well, all these shorts, you know, the, the selfie shorts or the other, the athletic shorts, they don't come in. You can wear bike shorts. The girls can wear bike shorts underneath their shorts that go down longer than uh, where they are. But, you know, we just don't want shorts that are kind of a little bit wider and then they're open and then, you know, it's just not a good situation. Uh, Jonathan asks, 
Can parents send food in these packages? Of course you can send food in these packages. And you can send food with your campers to camp. All of the food is collected in a cabin bin. And so every day during snack time, every day during free time, they can their bins are brought out and they can have their food. They can share their food if they'd like. They can not share their food if they'd like. Uh, but they have their food there and then they can kind of uh, watch through, they can have their food and you're more than welcome to send them packages. You want to toss a little something in there for a very uh, awesome camp director, that's still your call, you know, not a big deal. Uh, anonymous, if a camper brings a cavern, uh, camera, sorry, is it okay for them to have a computer to back up content? Maybe if the laptop reminds with an advisor. Uh, no, it's uh, the if they bring a laptop, it's going to be turned in on the first night and then it won't be given back to them until the end of the session. Um, uh, that's just how that's gonna gonna run. So if backup and anything is like a problem, I would advise to bring uh, several memory sticks if they're worried about having everything on one memory stick. Maybe a memory stick for every couple days so they don't lose anything. But no, uh, if they bring a laptop, it'll be turned in. Okay. Uh, Teresa asks, how is security and safety as you travel about from outside potential harm? Are local aware authorities aware of these young people around? Would you happen to need an additional security that we, that we may want to provide? Uh, so security at the camp is obviously paramount. The local security forces in Greece, in the village where we are, in, in Glifa, in Bartholomew, the larger town where we are, uh, in the town next to us, Amalia, we know, I know all, of, personally, I know all of the police chiefs. I have very good relationships with the security forces. And in addition to that, we have our own security force at camp that walks around the camp all night long uh, and that is out uh, doing perimeter checks around the camp at night as well as our staff is taking care of securing the campus. Uh, so we don't need any additional security. We're all set and you know we make sure that your campers are the absolute safest they could be. Uh, Dania asks, will IV sell items like sunscreen and toiletries? We do not sell items like sunscreen and toiletries. Uh, we ask that you bring those things over with you. Um, if your camper comes over and does not have toothpaste or soap or whatever, we can make accommodations to get those things. Uh, but that's not an overarching statement. That's not like don't send your kid with soap. Please send your camper with soap and toothpaste and all the things that they need uh, in order to properly be hygienic. Uh, so no, we don't have those things. Um, I just talked, Kia, I just talked a little bit about security staff measures in place at the camp. So thank you for your question. Uh, Anonymous says, Father Evagoras, you stated that your wife will be at camp this summer. Will baby worldwide be present also and is he as cute in person? The answer is yes to all of them. Yes, my wife will be present. Yes, baby worldwide. My son Christopher will be present. And yes, he is definitely as cute as he is in pictures uh, in person. If you haven't seen him, you can go to facebook.com slash fatherofagoras, where the cutest baby in the entire world is pretty much plastered all over my Facebook page. And I'm one of those dads now. Uh, anonymous attendee asks, have you ever lost a child? Thank God. In the 45 years of Ionian Village, we've never lost a camper. Uh, in the three years that I've been Ionian, running Ionian Village, we've never run, lost a camp. Uh, this is something that we take very, very seriously. Uh, these are your campers. These are your children. And we understand that you're giving them to our care. Uh, so we do constant cabin checks, literally to the point where you're going to... Oh. Hello? Okay. Uh, where you're going to kind of wonder, like, why are they doing so many checks? Um, so where your campers are going to say, you know, oh my God, they made us do cabin counts like every day, all day, every day, all day. We do that so that we do not lose any campers. Uh, so thank you for that question. Rose Stucker says, our kids are arriving at 6 a.m. Should they just meet the international terminal at noon? They're on Aritalia at 420. Uh, yeah, they can go actually at the international terminal at the Alitalia. I believe it's in terminal one. Uh, if they want to get in early, they can actually kind of go up. There's an area where they can get food. There's a McDonald's and some other stuff. And then around uh, noon, right, Marina? I would say around noonish. Yeah, that um, they'll be there, and so that we can get them all checked in. Anonymous, Christ is risen. Truly, He is risen. Will there be any of the children of the staff from the ages 10 to 12? Um, I'm not the the only children of staff that are uh, present at the camp. Our uh, staff of our clergy or our medical staff, our other 
uh, our other staff members who are in the cabins don't have any kids and it'll just be the kids of uh, our clergy members who will be with us. How likely is it that my child will, sorry, it goes weird. Uh, the question just disappeared. Uh, is it okay if we bring euros that we have left over? Okay, if they is it okay if they bring euros that we have? Yeah, it's totally okay if you bring euros. That, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. That. Totally okay, bring euros. That's fine. Then you already have them. Um, anonymous. What excursion sites will they see in Athens? How many days will we be in Athens? We'll be in Athens for two and a half days. While we're in Athens, one of those days we go to the island of Aegina, where we go to the monastery of Saint Nectarios, and then the second day. Uh, we do the Parthenon, we do Monastiraki, we do, uh, you know, Mitropoli, Cathedral, we do Changing of the Guards, uh, we do the hotel, we do those types of things, and we also do dinner in Glyphada one night. So that's what we'll be seeing while we're in Athens. When do the campers get their phones back? Will they have them on the last two days in Athens? No, they will not. They get their phones back the morning of, like, five minutes before they walk out to the bus to get on the bus to go to the airport. They get their phones as they're on their way out the door to go to the, to the uh, buses, to get on the buses to go to the airport. So they do not have their phones the last two days. Father, would you recommend a money belt? Also, what's the most functional, safe type of bag to carry around? Thank you. Thank you for your question, anonymous person. Um, money belt, if your camper will wear one, I think is probably a great idea. I know a lot of campers. I, look, I run a camp with high schoolers. And you're going to send your camper with a money belt and it's going to sit on their bed the entire time. If you can get them to wear a money belt, I think it's a great idea. Um, the best, most functional type of bag to carry around, honestly, is a backpack. Uh, because a backpack, they can flip around and have it on the front of them. And that's kind of what we recommend when we're in Athens or in places where it's really big. They can flip around, have it on them. A backpack you have on both shoulders with sometimes girls have purses. Those are, can be easily snatched and run off of, whereas a backpack is just, it's on you at all times. Um, so that's the best thing in my opinion. Uh, anonymous person asks, what do cabins, what do the cabins look like inside? The cabins are really basic. The camp was built in 1969. Uh, and so basically you walk in and there's like a, a main gathering room. And then there are four bedroom areas. Uh, each bedroom can fit 12 campers. So there's bunk beds and single beds. So each bedroom can fit 12 campers. So there's three rooms for staff members, and then there's one for, uh, or three, sorry, rooms for camp, campers, and then there's one room for staff members as well. It's uh, pretty basic, pretty simple, but our staff take the awesome initiative to go ahead and decorate it and bring all sorts of silly stuff for the inside, but it's pretty much just walls of floor and um, beds all set up. And there's also some drawers and some closet space for things, you know, hang nice clothes or dresses or things like that as well. Uh, anonymous person, we will, will we know exactly where we are traveling to on travel days prior to traveling to Greece? Uh, no, you won't actually, and even parents won't. So um, what we do is we keep our schedule uh, kind of on the download for several reasons. One, uh, sometimes we've had family members or parents try and, oh, well, you know, they're going to be in Patra that day, so we'll go and we'll meet up with them. And it's just, it, honestly, it's too difficult. Like your campers have come to be in the program and to experience the things that we want to be able to share with them. And then like when Thea Rula shows up, we have to kind of accommodate, you know, Thea Rula, oh, can I take the camper to get a cafe? And can I do it? I'm sorry, Thea, you can. And then Thea gets mad at me and then I have to go with Thea Rula. So uh, we don't publicize our, our travel schedule um, for that's one of the reasons. Other reasons we don't really want it out there in public for people to know where the program is going. Uh, so once our campers get there, they'll learn where they're going when they arrive in Greece. Uh, Lisa Papa Nicolau asked, Forti, sorry, from Dallas asked, how's the security at camp? I talked a little bit about it, Forti, but we keep our camp safe. Uh, we are uh, very have a great relationship with local police departments, and we have our own security force at the camp that monitors the camp while we're away, monitors the camp uh, at night when the kids are sleeping and things like that, so that uh, we're in a gated community and a gated camp uh, so that nothing is taken care of. Anonymous, how do you handle kids trying to leave the camp and go out of the campgrounds? <laughs> uh, it's not really not an issue. Um, uh, we have, like I said, we have security at camp that's up all night long from our security force comes on at 11 o'clock at night and they monitor the campgrounds and they are basically tacking around the camp until 6 a.m. 
Uh, at 6 a.m., that's when our grounds crew shows up and then they're around. And in between that, we also have our staff who are up and around and usually patrolling around the camp until about 3 o'clock in the morning. Honestly, I don't think we've had anybody sneak out from, from the camp. I mean, this was something I know that had happened in the past. And some of you who were campers or new campers, oh, you know, we went down, we did this. It just doesn't happen anymore. Uh, it's something that we're happy to say. Uh, it's something that we're very aware of and it's something that we literally do drills uh, so that when we hear something, when we see something, what are the right steps to make sure that our campers uh, are safe and are staying in their cabins where they need to be. Uh, Maria Hicks says, is there any way kids can find out who's attending in advance? Maybe a Facebook page so kids can voluntarily join to see who is attending. You know, Maria, that's a great idea. Um, it's just never something I've gotten on board with. I think part of the innocence of the Ionian Village experience is showing up at the airport that first day and meeting new people and seeing and uh, we already enable our campers enough um, through technology. And I think that Ionian Village, as you've hopefully seen through our digital, our digital technology policy, our communication policy, we're just not there. This is, you know, going back old school. Um, Ionian Village is very much an old school experience. Uh, so we want them to come back. And part of that camp experience is getting to meet people on that first day face to face. Not behind a screen, not behind a profile, not behind an avatar, but face-to-face, -face, getting to meet people the old-fashioned way. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, Anonymous, can you explain the bathroom and showering situations and facilities at the camp? Sure. So each gender has um, bathhouses where there's private stalls for showering and private stalls for uh, toilets. Um, and uh, private stalls for bathroom, private stalls for showering. And uh, then they go in there, there's sinks, there's toilets, there's all those things. And you know they can go in and use the facilities as they need to. Everything's private, there's no um, public. Charles Pappas from Dallas, Texas asks, do we get to see the names of all the campers in advance to see if we know some of their kids? No, unfortunately, you do not get to see that. Anonymous attendee, how do you deal with the jet lag? So here's how we deal with jet lag. Super easy. When we, your campers arrive at the airport, okay, they're going to get on the bus. And usually that first hour that we drive from the camp to Corinth, they're going to stay awake. They're going to meet people. Our staff are kind of roaming the bus. Hey, I'm this, I'm that. They're getting to meet each other. They eat at Corinth. And then there's about an hour and a half, two hours until we get to their next rest stop where we let campers take a nap. And then another hour and a half after that until we get to camp. And if they'd like, they can sleep. If not, they can stay awake and kind of have fun. And, um, do things like that. Uh, but basically the way we deal with jet lag is that after they arrive, we keep them up and we wait until uh, they keep, we keep them up. I'm sorry, there's like craziness happening here. Um, but we keep them awake, we keep them alive. And even though they're dragging, we make them stay up all until the nighttime. And then that first night when they're really, really tired, they go to sleep, they get their eight hours of sleep. And in the morning, uh, most people are ready to go and the jet lag is not even an issue anymore. Uh, so that seems to be the last of the 250 questions that were asked. Uh, but thank you everyone for being here and for asking all of the questions that you had um, and being with us. Oh, Nikki has one more question. So here's the one more question. I remember hearing the complaint of freezing shower water. Ha ha! Although there were better shower time, don't remember earlier, early or late. That's true. Uh, it's a great experience to find out yourself. So Nikki, thank you for that uh, comment. So here's the last thing I want to say. Um, oh, someone just said hotel monitoring. Good, good question, anonymous person who I cannot acknowledge. Uh, in the hotel, obviously the hotel, the Intercontinental has their own security that they have monitoring the hotel, but our staff are constantly on um, watch out in the hallways, are constantly out up until very late at the night to make sure the kids are not bouncing, bopping back and forth uh, and, and being in rooms uh, that they shouldn't be in. So I'm going to have to put a pause on the questions there uh, so that we can get out. If you have any more questions that we didn't answer, that I didn't answer, please feel free to call our office. Uh, at 212-570-3536. Also, you can find many of the, much of the information that we went over tonight on this webinar, which will be posted on our website later, or on our website at ionianvillage.org. Here's what I want you to know, and this is from me to you. 
I take very seriously our responsibility at Ionian Village. And our responsibility is to take care of your campers and to lead them on a journey, on a trip, on a pilgrimage to Christ. It's to get them to experience both Greece and our motherland and our home country and to experience their Orthodox faith. I take very seriously our responsibility and I train our staff personally so that I know that they are ready for your campers. We are going to have the best summer of your campers' lives. It's going to be an experience that they will never forget. And I promise you, a few months from now, you're going to be wondering why can't I get my camper to stop talking about Ionian Village. We are all excited. I'm excited. The marinas are excited. Nico, Constantine, my wife, my baby, our staff members, we are all pumped and ready for your campers to come and join us. Before we even see your campers, our staff will go through a 10-day orientation to get ready and to be ready for any possible situation that may happen with your campers. But here's what I want you to know. I got them. I promise you, I will take care of your campers. I promise you, we will love your campers. I promise you, we will have a wonderful, wonderful time with your campers. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on this webinar. Thank you so much for asking your great questions. Thank you so much for being a part of this and for entrusting the Ionian Village Program, the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, and myself with your campers this coming summer. Christ is risen. Have a wonderful, beautiful night. God bless.